Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm really excited to discuss um, many of your questions regarding uh, Gecko's new Raptor series drives. What I have here is a finished Raptor system that I've worked on for a client for the last three weeks. Um, I just want to go over the basics of this system. Many of you have already seen my ProGrade assembly with uh, G203V drives. These are Gecko's most advanced drives and again their setup is a little different and as far as their setup tweaking to get the most out of your system, they're by far and away uh, the most elaborate drives on the market. So. We'll start from the front here, of course. We've got all our ProGrade graphics all done. Gecko's contact information here, should the client require it, made in the USA, which I'm real proud of. Um, coming on to uh, the left side of the system, you can see, once again, metal mesh fan cooling. As far as the uh, air filters, I believe in using metal mesh because the volume of air, guys, is never restricted. Again, we've got our metal fan grills. Fans are toolessly mounted, you'll see that. I'm going to let her just get on the opposite side now so we can cover exactly how the build was done. Okay, we'll start from the back plate. You can see we've got all of our axis allocated and labeled using uh, ProGrade acrylic backed uh, permanent adhesive vinyl. And it is, of course, laminated for the life of the system for the client. Everything in this system is custom done as far as the actual graphics so that the client pretty much does not have to reference a user's manual as he goes to service the system, which I feel is really imperative. Got our GX16 five pin connectors. And of course the system is using my brand new 18 gauge four lead double shielded cable. Now these cables guys are 26 feet in length. Um, I've been selling quite a few of these. I'm getting a lot of requests for them. Being they're double shielded, they're good for any system of course, but uh, the best part about these of course they're plug and play. This particular client is using his own motors, so using these, all we got to do is supply him the connectors, and he's all set there. Again, he gets four of these with this system because it is a four-axis unit. And, of course, we've got our XYZA dust covers on the GX16 five-pin panel mounts. You can see how simple these mount. They just go right through. And, again, with the panel mounts, the, the actual cables plug directly in, and then you're just responsible for wiring the actual uh, opposite end of the connector going to the drive itself. Coming over here, on all my ProGrade systems now, I include a DB9 connector. And a lot of guys go, why would you use a single DB9 connector? And honestly, why I like using them is you have nine pins on a DB9. If you utilize uh, switches at all, whether it be limit or home, even though I'm not a big fan of them, lots of my clients may decide at one point or another they need an output or an input. You can utilize this connector up to all nine pins using one cable instead of using multiple cables which requires you to take more real estate in the system and of course more work use one connector with nine pins you can do it all with one single single cable and be all set with that so it's again it's a much cleaner assembly much faster and you still get exactly the same effect you're looking for and we've got on this side our db25 communication port um, again, that's going to be used. He'll be using an ESS. So again, cleanest possible systems ever. You don't see an EMI filter here because the ESS system actually has an EMI filter on it. GX16 3-pin power in. Again, with the screw lock connector. This is a trip light power cord. I built this cable myself too. Everything in this is fabricated. Uh, this system actually has seven fuses. I don't think I mentioned that in the last ProGrade system, but all ProGrade systems will typically have seven to possibly ten fuses, depending upon how many power supplies you're using, if they're properly done, and as far as having internal fuses, as well as the drives having an, uh, uh, actual fuses internally, and then, of course, the external fuse right here that's uh, located centrally in the back panel. So, again, we've got our 10 amp external fuse here, one in each of the four drives, the four Raptors. Again, we are using our new heat sinks as well. Everything in here is, of course, toolessly mounted. And that being said, um, I've had clients uh, recently tell me that they've actually had problems with screws coming loose, and I listen to any feedback I get because I know shipping can be hectic. Uh, these units have been all torqued, but they will be double nutted prior to shipping. And one other key point that I want to point out is that now on all my ProGrade systems, I'm using G-Force shock sensors. Many of you don't know what they are. They're a little sensor that has more or less a paint splatter inside them that will be released if a certain amount of G-Force is actually exceeded on the package. Okay, and I'm doing that because, again, there's a lot of work here, a lot of money here, and every, every package needs to be protected, and again, it gives us both a little more peace of mind. Uh, once again, 
you can see how the thumb nuts are all elevated for easy access to these drives. Very, very simple. Toolless mounts on our fans, nothing new there. Uh, fan terminal block splitter, everything is of course graphic and allocated, negative, positive. Coming to the front power switch, we've got our ground live out, 120 volt in. If the client has to service this, simple to do. Everything is right here. Um, I'm going to let her pan around to the back panel. I want to cover the breakout board and some unique features about it, of how this setup is. Okay. Now this breakout board, you can tell, is elevated. And the reason I elevated the breakout board is because the Raptors, they have two options. They can use a horizontal terminal block or they can use a vertical mount. I like the vertical mount for this reason because the higher they are, your wires come in nice and neat. You can see our double ferrites installed in all of our step and direction signals. But mounting the board this high keeps all of my leads extremely short. And I tell you guys that all the time. Try to keep your leads as short and as tight as possible. None of these leads are in excess of 12 inches. They're all very, very small. And then, of course, with the dual ferrites you mitigate basically all EMI without dealing with shielding which again is much much cleaner that being said we've got our giant ferrites here that's actually going around all of our leads going to actually drive our motors you can see all four of them right there and then over here I get a lot of questions on the grounding as far as how a system is grounded you can see our ground splitter right here ground comes into the system here's the shield drains coming right off of our GX16 five pin connectors, they go right in, so they're sharing the same central ground point, which would known, be known as a star point ground. Again, it's got its label right here, comes down, splits, and goes right over to our power distribution block for 110 right here. Okay, so everything is on the same ground. Now the other factor is, all of our power supplies bases are grounded. Of course, the uh, chassis that we're using is my new Rev2, but this is my larger prograde chassis. And again, it's uh, dipped in the conductive coating. So once the chassis is uh, conductive, and of course our power supplies are conductive, as long as they're making contact and, and the actual power supplies are grounded, everything is grounded. So everything is using the same central point of ground. Once again, I hope you guys study this ground because I get a lot of questions on this and it's very easy to see how everything is done in split 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 and then split all the way again everything uses one central ground now the power supply or excuse me the breakout board here again it's mounted toolessly with our thumb screw mounts and again you can see our e-stop cable coming in comes all the way around this is 22 gauge double shielded cable I've once again carry this in my store I'll put links below for uh, any components that I've used in the system you can see the shield drain coming over I kept it nice and short it grounds right to the base mount of where the chassis is grounded so it shares uh, the same central grounding point I even put a graphic there so the client realizes that it is a ground very very short lead and you can see the terminals underneath I went and mounted the toolless terminal mounts underneath because Raptors are unique drives in that they actually require another 5 volt uh, input as far as voltage to go for signals so what I wanted to do is do it cleanly and I actually mounted the terminal blocks underneath again they're toolessly mounted and then I split this ground bar for the actual breakout board, I split it horizontally with a toolless mount in order to give him another option if he decides to add inputs. You only have one ground on this board on each side for inputs and outputs. So of course I wanted to give him as many options as possible so he wouldn't have to add anything. This is the easiest way to do it. Again, it's centrally located directly under the DB25 communication cable and that way everything is nice and neat and you can see how it goes right underneath. She's, I'm sure she's filming it. It's just kind of hard to see on that angle, but you can see how everything just goes right underneath and it's clean. And if you did need to service it, you got your toolless mounts, you're all set. Okay. Again, uh, I can't highlight this enough because many guys do still ask me this. This, com this chassis, as large as it is, will completely break down uh, in sections. So as you're assembling your system, it's very easy to get a pro grade level build because you can move every panel and again, being it's aluminum, it weighs virtually nothing. I believe this system weighed about 20 pounds. So compared to a steel enclosure, most steel enclosures by themselves weigh at least 20 pounds. And again, we know they don't break down. If he needs to service these cooling fans, again, being they're toolessly mounted, he can just remove the base mounted screws right there, the 632nd screws, uh, trim the actual wire ties off, service his fans, have it back in in seconds. And again, I don't need to tell you with all toolless mounting how fast it is to change a drive or, again, do any type of servicing, even the power distribution. 
We're using 12 gauge silicone leads right here. We're splitting our uh, 48 volt leads. Again, he is using a 48 volt, uh, 12 and a half amp, 600 watt power supply. Now, I did increase his voltage to 50 volts because again, he's using Raptors. He can easily tolerate that. His motors can tolerate that. Um, but you can see our 12 gauge silicone leads splitting for our power distribution comes right around. And there we go, remotely mounted, again, toolessly. He can service everything in minutes. And again, all screw lock connectors. This way, everything is all set and ready to go and torqued. Uh, again, overall, you can see here the amount of graphic detail that uh, I wanted the system to have. These right here are his micro step settings because these drives you can actually adjust your micro steps. And again, with those micro step settings, I wanted to make sure that he had all this information available. If he decides he wants to work on his system or make any tweaks, it's all right there. He doesn't need to use his user's manual. He's got everything from motor current adjustment right here. These are all snapshots I've taken direct from the user's manual, retouched, and did the graphics myself. He's also got right here the trim pot. I even gave him a snapshot of the drive in the exact centralized location so he can make an adjustment on that to adjust his idle current. These drives allow you to adjust your idle current. I set his at 50%. Um, you can set them whatever you'd like. Again, I would just be careful at what you set them for. Make sure your holding torque is applicable. Other than that, very, very clean setup. Again, our new dual rail power supplies are in. This is 48 volt on one rail. Second rail is five volt. Using this power supply allows power going to your cooling system and then, of course, power going to his breakout board. So again, you can see exactly how everything coincides. If he needs to separate a panel, because I get a lot of questions on this, screw connectors are used all the way through screw and circle ring connectors. So if he needed to remove a front panel or a side panel, all of this comes unscrewed and he's all set to go. Once again, toollessly mounted. So everything is very simple, very clean. And again, the whole point of these type of builds, because these are more complex, is to make it as simple as possible for the end user to service the system themselves. Because bottom line is this, I can't be there at your location with you, but I can give you my knowledge here. And these notes will save you a tremendous amount of time. I use them as I'm assembling it, and I know you'll use them as you're not only working on it, but as you become more familiar with the system. Again, you can see the pinout right here for his axis. GX16, it's got all his motor pinouts, B minus blue, B plus white, A minus black, A plus red, and pin five ground. Um, coming over here, breakout board wiring, everything is allocated in direct centralized location, meaning this is a direct mirror representation of how this breakout board is actually mounted. So his step and direction signals are all, all correlated, excuse me, to that, and he's all set. You can see ground splitters, everything is right there for him, all that information. So again, you guys can see the amount of work. This is a lot of work. Um, if you entail this yourself, you know it's a lot of work, but I promise you it will pay off with the amount of detail that's put in here, especially as you go to work on your own system. A lot of guys forget at one point or another you're going to have to work on the system. I see a lot of permanent type things. I get asked, why do I prefer wire ties over the wire guides? And typically, I like these for serviceability. Much, much cleaner and easier to service than pushing wires in and all that. These you can snip and be out in seconds. Um, some guys prefer the other way. It's whichever way you prefer. The main thing is, is build it right, take your time, utilize the star point ground in whatever system you're doing. Don't forget the shielding. Don't forget the EMI filters if you guys are going to go that route as far as using ferrites. Um, I like the ferrites once again just because they're much smoother as far as um, just centrally locating them in the system. These are very, very easy to install. They're definitely not expensive. You don't have to worry about grounding anything and you know you're going to get the cleanest possible signals. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. Um, I'm real proud of the fact that, as far as I know, this is the uh, one of the few Raptor systems I've seen online. I'm going to power on now because I know I get a lot of questions on that too. A lot of guys are like, does it run? Of course it runs. It's here, LED, breakout board, LED 48, LED 48.5. You come over here so you can see all of the drives LEDs. Right there. The Raptors do have a test button, and if a motor was connected, if you guys wanted to test, all you have to do is press that button, and you're all set. You'd see the motor actually oscillate uh, 
clockwise and counterclockwise to let you know everything is working. Once again, you've got full status on these drives. These are virtually indestructible, the Rapids. They're really, really amazing drives. Over voltage, uh, everything from over voltage, uh, overheating, everything is built into them. And you can see your adjustable trim pots right there. Here's your fuse if you have to change it. And you can definitely hear the cyclonic action from the fans. We've got our airflow coming in over the drive, bounces off the rear panel, and gets extracted. And of course, with the top lid on, you basically have a Faraday cage that's airtight. And again, massive amounts of airflow that never goes stagnant. And just to clarify, because I know a lot of guys go, man, that's loud. These fans are 10,000 RPM, Sanyo Denki. These are brushless. They're ready to 100,000 hours. These are commercial fans. I'm not using PC fans. I'm using fans that will last the life of the system and, again, um, fit the smallest possible mounting platform. These are only 60 by 38 mil. So, again, very, very, very high RPM. Once the lid of the unit's on and you're doing machining, because I've had guys say, well, you know, it's loud. These are not, I'm not designing my system to be a PC. This isn't a Lee Ann Lee and I'm trying to do a gaming computer. It's not about that. This is about stability. And in the shop environment, we don't know how long the client will be using this. And therefore, we want maximum stability. I don't know what ambient temperature he'll be running in. This is done the correct way. This way, no air gets stagnant. That's why we use cyclonic action. Airflow should always be coming over the drives. Heat sinks naturally are, are doing uh, their job expanding the actual surface area. And once that air volume comes in, bounces, and then gets extracted right here by this fan. So again, overall, you can see there's no base that's been left unturned. I want to make sure that that client not only is happy, but gets what he's paying for as far as stability. And when I hear that steppers, I get this question all the time, are steppers as accurate as servos or they're not as accurate? I'm telling you, if you build your system to this grade, you can rest assured you're going to have one hell of a system. Regardless of if it's stepper or servo, always use this type of ideas as far as what you see here. Whatever you guys can take for your own information, I'm telling you, I think you'll be very happy with the end result. So again, guys, to all my subscribers, I love you guys. I haven't been... Um, able to post many videos this one is like uh, it's taken me another week basically to get this up because this system build has been extensive um, and I've had a lot going on in the shop um, I will be doing more of course uh, probably try to do some more more frequently but to all my subscribers I love you guys thank you all for your support if you guys have questions or require quotes of course you can message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com or through my eBay store eDealers direct now guys when I say and I, I cannot emphasis emphasize excuse me this enough when I say if you guys have questions I'm more than willing to work with anybody as far as questions if you buy components from me you know I'm always there if you don't buy components from me I'm there but I'm also there within reason if you're asking excuse me if you're asking me to rewire an entire system or go over you know a VFD wiring or whatnot um, I am going to be expected to be paid for that. I mean, there's an extensive amount of time there, and I think there has to be some realm that you understand. My time is just as valuable as yours. Many of you realize that you will not work for free. I don't mind helping. That's why I started the channel. I wanted you guys to have the information done correctly. But please be realistic and be respectful. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. I'll help anybody, but I just ask somebody to be respectful of me the same way I would be respectful of them. So again, guys, I love you all. Thank you for your support. Take care.